Sound speeds. And if you do location sound and are in the market for a headwear that you can use on set, then why not look at headwear produced by sound manufacturers for use on a film set? Seem logical? Well, if you weren't aware that there are such products out there, then pay close attention because I'm about to introduce you to quite a few of them. Before we get going, full disclosure, although this isn't exactly a product review, I was sent these products free of charge to share with you in this showcase video. I do get to keep them following this video, but I'm not going to allow that to affect my opinion, so you can expect this to be a fair and honest presentation. The American brand k is known for their outstanding customer service and versatile product catalog filled with professional sound products designed for people that require quality products that just work. You don't have to worry about them. Enter the k -Tech Stingray Sun Hat or the KSH-1 as it's known. Now, what makes this so good for production sound people? Made of a nondescript lightweight material sporting SPF 50 sun protection from UVA and UVB sun rays, the sand-colored Stingray Sun Hat features a half frame in the front to keep the sun off of your face throughout most of the day. The only exception would be if the sun gets too low and then short of a face covering, nothing can. On the back half of the hat, however, there is a neck cover that will keep you from sunburn at all times of the day. Heat vents out via a black mesh that goes down the side of the hat and through small holes above them. The hat adjusts to your head in two different ways, first by an adjustable chin strap and secondly by an elastic sizing band on the back. In just a few seconds, the hat goes from slightly loose to snug but not tight and that prevents it from moving around on your head. So far, you might just shrug at the Stingray hat, but this is why I saved the best feature for last, the openings for your over-ear headphones. While wearing the hat, you can put on your headphones and secure them underneath the brim. Admittedly, it does take a few times to get the hang of it, but I found that if you hold the chin straps along the brim and then toss it over your head, adjusting for fit as needed, the headphones go over smoothly if you overshoot your ears by an inch or so and then place them on your ears. The thing to note is that the headphone holes split the brim, and when you put the headphones on, at first they will most likely cover the back part of the brim, so you'll need to pull them out from underneath the headphones. Not only will the cardboard line brim block the sound, but you'll also need them out so that you can connect the front and back parts of the brim together to keep the sun off the sides of your head. Connecting both parts is easy thanks to the magnetic button design. One button sticks up similar to how the positive side of a AA battery does, and the other side is designed with a dent in it to mate with that first button perfectly. It's a very clever idea and one that works really well. Without using a mirror, it will most likely take a few moments for you to put the headphones into the hat and secure it the first few times, but that's not a very big deal and it's to be expected. Of course, you could always just put the headphones into the hat and then put it on your head. That works too. Personally, I wish the hat came in black as well as light yellow, but when I asked K-Tech if they would be releasing a black version, they replied that they have no plans to because sound people would prefer a sand-colored one to a black one. That's probably true, but there are other people out there like me that would prefer a black one and would buy it. In case you're wondering, the hat can't be dyed. Trust me on that. I did reach out to a few professional dyeing services, but once they saw the material the hat's made of, they said it's not going to take the dye and we're not going to even try it. All in all, I really do like the Stingray Sun hat, and you could get one for yourself at your favorite pro sound vendor for $47.50 at the time of this video. If you browse through my videos and hopefully watch them, then I'm sure you've seen me mention Bubble Bee Industries quite a few times. I even reviewed the Bubble Bee Sidekick inner ear monitors. But Bubble Bee, in case you're not familiar with them, makes a large variety of wind protection options for both full-size microphones and lav mics. And they also have a big long list and variety of lav mic accessories. And they're constantly adding new products to their product line. And they've also added three hats. These three hats are similar yet different enough to serve your needs and personal preferences. The first we're going to look at is the Visor Cap, a cotton baseball hat that's black in color except for the white Bubble Bee logo and catchphrase embroidered on it. It's light, just like any other baseball cap, and adjusts via a strap on the back. There's one snap placed on either side of the hat at the end of the visor, and that's for connecting the clear thermoplastic polyurethane face shield. It is soft, so it won't provide protection from exploding debris on set or anything, but if there's a virus going around and face shields are required for protection, it'll work nicely. It should also be noted that the face shield comes folded over a few times, and if there's a wrinkle or a fold line in it, just run a heat gun or a hairdryer over it and it'll smooth right out. Just so it's been said, I did not need to do that with any of the face shields in this video. The face shield of the visor cap doesn't cover over your ears, so you can use it with your favorite headphones, and if you need to, you can flip the visor up and over the top of the hat and get it out of your way. Personally, the face shield sticks out more than I would like it to as a boom operator, but if I were a bag mixer, I would probably appreciate it much more because I could look down at my bag and not have it be obscured by the face shield. 
As it is, I occasionally hit the face shield with my hands or boom if I don't modify my technique, but the hat fits just fine, so knowing that I could potentially hit the face shield is enough to train me not to hit the face shield. The face shield of the visor cap also ventilates better than any of the other hats from Bubblebee. Another piece of Bubblebee headwear offered is the visor cap wide. This wider cap is similar to the cap we just talked about in material and coloring, but this one has a different shape and design. There's a ribbon on the inside of the cap so that you can size it correctly to your head, and as with the standard cap, the wide cap allows you to use your headphones with the face shield on. It secures to the visor via a thin zipper, and the pull tab may bounce a little bit causing a metal tap noise if you're walking around while booming or bag mixing, but you're not going to hear that on your tracks. This face shield also sticks out a bit like the one on the standard cap did, but again, it could be helpful to a bag mixer, but I found it a little bit annoying while booming with it. That's just my opinion, though. The visor hat is a bucket-style hat with a soft brim unlike the two visor caps. While the brim sticks out farther on the front of the cap and wide cap, this thinner brim goes all the way around your head evenly, providing better sun protection on the back half of your head. It also uses a ribbon for size adjustments, just like the wide cap does, but the zipper for the face shield is different. This face shield wraps farther around your head, making this the only headwear option in this video that you can't use headphones with. But if you use IEMs, no problem. This zipper's pull tab also makes the same metal tapping noise if you're moving around. The visor hat's face shield sticks out less than the ones on the two caps do, so consider that if you're bag mixing or booming. At the time of this video, each of these three Bubblebee headwear options can be purchased at your favorite pro sound vendor for $24 each. It should be noted that especially if you live in a humid location, the face shield may fog up a bit on you if you wear it with a face mask. Most face masks vent out the top near your eyes and nose, so your warm breath can fog up the face shield in front of your eyes pretty quickly. Treating the face shield with an anti-fog spray may help, but not as well as using a mask that vents your air out the sides instead. The VersaFlex mask I'm wearing has a little flap on the inside, and if you flip it up, it snugs your nose in the top of your cheek, so even if the side venting air does fog up the face shield, it's far less noticeable because it's not in front of your face. The build quality of these three hats is very good, but be aware that the zippers may stick a bit on you the first few times you put on or take off the face shield. Each of these caps and hats have a variety of features for you to consider before you make your purchase, and I put links down in the description to all of these products if you'd like to use them, including the VersaFlex masks. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Sound Speeds, and be sure to tune in the future for more products you didn't know you wanted and sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.